some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everybody, this is Kevin from Stingray Biology. I have this uh, marbled Matoro Stingray. All of a sudden it stopped eating and I don't know why. I had to separate it from the rest of the group and put her in her own private uh, quarantine tank. And I just wanted to show you the footage of what she looks like right now. Uh, from my experience, most likely she's not going to make it. I'm gonna do the best I can to find out what the cause is and learn from it and see if I can learn from my mistakes. But I do have this gut instinct. She probably swallowed a stinger that shed in the tank. And what happens is when I have my whole group of rays together, they feed so well, they're so active, they're always like jumping on the food. And it's possible I might have missed a stinger that shed in the tank and while feeding they're so aggressive that she might have accidentally inhaled that stinger that's my guess i don't know right now after she passes away i think i'm going to do an autopsy on it and see if my instincts are correct okay so here she is um, in her own tank and she's all humped up in the middle she hasn't eaten uh, i don't know if you guys can see it her head is all shrunken in it's indented, and she's not looking good. Um, I would say she hasn't eaten already in over a week, and there was no signs of improvement since I moved her here. She's not active at all. The reason why I suspect that she swallowed a stinger is because she's all hunched up like that, and like she's in a, a lot of pain. Well, only time will tell. We'll see what happens, but in the meantime, you know, I'm doing the best that I can to treat her. I'm babying her with every food I can possibly think of to try to get her to eat. I'm medicating as well, but there has been no signs of improvement. Now here's a bird's eye view of her. It really hurts me to think that I could possibly lose this ray. She's got really beautiful color and pattern. And let's see if I, I don't know if you guys can tell the head is all shrunken in. Okay, so uh, I'm doing a water change right now and I just want to show you something very interesting. Uh, once I started adding the, the fresh water into the tank, she got a lot more active. See, she's swimming into the water, whereas what I showed you before, she was just sitting there not wanting to move at all, but she immediately reacted to the fresh clean water. Very interesting. So maybe my initial assessment could be wrong. I keep my water quality uh, very pristine so it couldn't be anything wrong with my water quality but she just really reacted to the the fresh water that I put into the tank so the water change is done I just turned off the valve and let's see she's still moving maybe she likes the fresh water or the blast of oxygen that was entering the water when the, when the water is like splashing in. We will keep an eye on her and see if there's any improvements. Hey everybody, so three days has gone by and I wanted to update everybody on the progress of this marbled Motoro. Few things has changed, uh, which made me optimistic, but then there's also a couple of things that um, make me think that it's not going so good uh, so it's kind of like a, a toss-up and we're just it's just all a guessing game and trying to figure out what we can do to save her so here she is um, as you guys can see her color and her tone and contrast is looking a lot better much more sharp and she has become more active so those are the positive signs that um, I had mentioned earlier um, but the, the not so positive signs is she's doing a lot of lifting and curling up on the, the edges of her disc. Um, this could be commonly uh, known as what we call death curl. She doesn't do it to the, to the true extent of what we call death curl. Usually death curl, the whole fish all around the sides lift up like, and she's almost, it would look like a cup. But in this case, you see she's just lifting the front, the back, and it's going up and down. Um, so that kind of throws me off. So there's signs of improvement and then there's signs of deterioration. The next sign of deterioration 
is the head. Because she hasn't eaten in so long, it's been probably going on about three weeks, there was an indentation on the forehead last week where it was all sunken in. But now it has progressed to the middle of her, her head right here um, between the eyes. So that's all sunken in now. It's really bad. She's literally skin and bones right now. You can see the whole outline over her back, the rib cage. You can see the bone structure here by the tail. I don't know from this angle you can see it. But like right here on this corner right here on the two sides and right here is what we call the hip bones or the pelvic bone and that's showing as well. So un unless we can get some food in her, I really don't think the chance of her recovery is very high. But because her skin tone and everything else is looking better and becoming more active, there could be a chance that over the next couple days she starts eating. But if she is, she hasn't eaten I guess in a total of almost five weeks she's all curled up he's dead the head is all indentated I mean a deep indentation in the forehead um, so basically I would say she has starved to death all right so I'm gonna pull the ray out now just putting on some gloves because they're actually really slimy and I don't want my hands to sleep from it afterwards probably died um, during the night because uh, when I left yesterday she was still alive. You guys can see the head is all indented right here from uh, lack of food. The pelvic bones right here and here. She's all skinny. She's basically all skin and bones. The underside is all bloody. I'm not a surgeon. I don't have a scalpel. This is the best I have apart from this knife. Just cut down from the middle here. Get on top. The skin's very tough. It's kind of leathery. I think I punctured the, that's the liver. Oh, I think I hit the gallbladder right there. That's the green stuff coming out from the gallbladder. This part is the liver. That's a, I'm just gonna rinse this away. Typically on the ray, um, the liver is the uh, biggest organ, and that's this whole thing right here. Um, I'm going to have to remove this bone out of the way. Okay, so that's the liver. I guess I'm going to have to remove the liver. the liver right here. Okay. This is the intestinal tract right here. Um, I'm going to have to open it up. The intestinal tract. I'm not sure what organ this is. I'm going to cut open the intestinal tract and see what we find in here. I mean, it should be empty since she hasn't eaten in so many weeks. There's absolutely nothing in her intestinal tract. No waste, nothing. Um, that green stuff that you see, that's just bile from the, from the bladder. It's going to be hard to cut through. It's all bone. This is the rib cage. My wife is helping me film. She's covering up her face from the smell. So 
cut through. This is the mouth. Opened up this ray from the mouth all the way down into the body cavity, into the intestines, and I don't see anything uh, for the cause of why the ray died. Um, the liver color is good. If it was anything wrong, the liver would be really dark, but it's not. So, unfortunately, um, we couldn't find the cause of death, uh, which is unfortunate because I was hoping that I can learn from it and uh, prevent something like this from happening in the future. It's really sad for me to do this, but you know, it's something I need to do so that we can learn. But um, thank you all for watching and uh, stay tuned for any uh, new episodes coming up from Finger Biology. Thanks.